everybody raves and reviews about the Steam Deck, but I'm gonna tell you why I have a problem with the Steam Deck. I bought the Steam Deck with one thing in mind, and that was to be able to run games smoothly all the way up to PS3. That means I could play Xbox 360, I could play GameCube, and I spent months searching, like, what's the best system to emulate all this? And I chose to get the Steam Deck. The Chinese are creating cheap handhelds that they seem to be dropping weekly that can emulate pretty much anything up to Xbox 360, PS3, just depends on how much money you wanna play. You can play Sega Genesis, NES, Super Nintendo, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 3DS on some of them. There's literally a kajillion of them. So when you look at the prices and what you get, it's pretty much an obvious choice that you're gonna get the Steam Deck. You just gotta pull up your big boy pants and make the purchase. Now, the problem with the Steam Deck is that it runs on Linux, and all you OS nerds know what I'm talking about. And I don't really care what people say because there is a learning curve to learning Linux and using Linux. Trust me, if you look in the world, not everybody's got the RAM how to use Linux, especially once you run into something that requires problem solving. I ran into problems when I was just trying to get Emulation Station on my Steam Deck. I had to go through troubleshooters, I had to look up things on Reddit, I had to try to figure out why certain games wouldn't play. I couldn't even get my Xbox emulator to play right until I downloaded some specific BIOS to make it run. Most people aren't gonna do that. Don't even get me started on integer scaling. I remember I was playing the PlayStation 2 emulator and I was pressing buttons at the same time and it kept flipping between different integer scaling and my resolution was getting better, the game was playing better, but you know, it was kind of a pain in the butt because I was just trying to play the game and it dropped the resolution and it looked crappy. And it's just most people aren't going to be able to deal with this. You got to read instructions. People just want to plug and play. I know everybody said it. Emulation Station, it's so easy. Bro, it was not that easy for me. It was easy, but not that easy. Luckily for you, you've been gaming for 20 years and I'm sure you'll figure it out. I know you want to play online. Well, good luck. You remember the Linux OS I was just talking about? Well, easy anti-cheat doesn't allow some games to work online. In order for easy anti-cheat to work, the developer of the game has to make sure that it works for Linux. When you think about it, why would these companies be incentivized to run games on Linux? If you're really thinking about the money, how much market share is being used to develop games on Linux. And the whole point of me getting a Steam Deck was to not be tethered to my desktop so I could just pick up and play anywhere I want to. And that includes online gaming. And let's just be honest, I'm a casual. Like, I don't have time to be sweaty and be playing a game for eight hours. And sometimes I just can't sit on my computer and play consistently for a long period of time. Now, I've never been into playing games on Steam. I've had a few games on Steam, but ultimately it's never been something that's caught my attention. But that all changed when I got a Steam Deck. Now, after I got the Steam Deck, I'd browse games and type in old school games like Metal Gear Solid or any of the Naruto Ninja Storm games, and to my surprise, a lot of these games are there. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, do not forget that game. Of course I want to get these games. And eventually I caved and I started buying games. Hell, I'd even buy them in packages. They'd even have the summer sale and I'd buy all the Naruto games for like $2.99. And as you should expect, my game library began to grow and take up more and more room on the Steam Deck. And don't get me started on the micro SD card. When you're starting to emulate into Xbox, PS2, those games start to take up more and more room. I dedicate the SD card to the emulation and I use the internal storage for my Steam games. And as you'd expect, my library began to grow and grow and grow. And I sure as hell do not have enough time to play them all. But alas, this is what brings me here. I don't care if you get the 512 or you get the one terabyte with the special screen on it. That's not enough storage. You're gonna need to start thinking, I'm gonna take this thing apart and void my warranty. So today I got the team group two terabyte SSD that goes in the Steam Deck. And I'm gonna put this in my Steam Deck so that I can play all these games. Team group was kind enough to send me this SSD and I'm extremely grateful for them. If you wanna check them out, they carry SSDs, they carry RAM for your computer, they have a MagSafe SSD. If you wanna shoot high quality video on your iPhone, you can go to their website, teamgroupinc.com. I'll also have it linked below. So you'll notice this SSD is shaped different than your traditional SSD that you install on your computer is because this is the type of SSD that the Steam Deck takes. 
it's just a smaller form factor. And thank God, because I wanted to spend a lot of time researching different SSDs and maybe buying the wrong one and installing the wrong one in my Steam Deck. So now that we got all that out the way, let's go ahead and install this SSD in my Steam Deck. We're gonna jump over and I'm gonna walk you through how we're gonna do it. Okay, first you need to drain your battery to below 25%. I'm an idiot and let mine charge 100% overnight. So I had the pleasure of having Power Rangers Fight for the Grid menu open for five hours. Now shut down your Steam Deck, Remove the SD card from the deck because this could damage it if you leave it inserted when taking it apart. Then we got to go into the BIOS, turn on battery storage mode so the deck doesn't turn on by accident during the installation. Use the Steam Deck's case to protect the thumbsticks when you're taking it apart. You'll need a kit with special tools like a spudger, opening pick, and a T6 Torx driver for the screws. Keep track of where each screw goes. It matters where the screws came from. Once that's done, it's time for the fun part. Now with the opening pick, we're going to start at the triggers and work our way around the shell. And voila! I tried to remove the battery with this ribbon handle, but it was coming off the cable when I pulled it, so I had to try a different approach. Instead, remove the back shield by unscrewing the three screws holding it in place. And don't go ripping the shield off, just gently raise it because it's got a cable glued to the bottom of it. Then you can wiggle the battery connection cord out. Using tweezers, lift the flap on the right button board and pull out the cable. Now you just gotta move the protective shield and unscrew the SSD. It should come out pretty easy with a little wiggle. It has a protective heat sleeve on the SSD, so you need to take that off. Grab your shiny new SSD and put the shield on it. Plug the SSD in and screw it down to the motherboard. Now it's just putting the deck back together the way you took it apart. Once you have the deck put back together, the last thing to do is to download the Steam Deck OS image and flash that on a portable drive. The drive has to be larger than eight gigs because of the image's file size. The very last thing is to re-image your Steam Deck with the OS. Then you're done. It may seem like a lot, but honestly, it was a ton of fun for me. That's why I put this video together. If you enjoyed this, please consider subscribing and liking the video. Until next time, peace.